what's up guys welcome back to star citizen welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new series this is going to be a beginner's guide series to star citizen this is obviously episode one starting with the basics and getting into the verse essentially covering well the basics moving around using the inventory inventory yeah that's right inventory <laughs> uh, going through the moby glass getting in your ship moving your ship around that kind of basics and each episode obviously will progress through the game and um, cover as much as we can to help new players into the verse right down to moving around different cities getting to your ship for the first time all that kind of stuff to start with just quickly um, how do you get the game well let's jump to the the website quick Robert Space Industries And you will find this page. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do to get the game is either go to the pledge store or just click play now. Once you've clicked play now, it will take you to this page showing you the current uh, starter packs that RSI are sort of pushing. You don't need to select them. Go to the bit below it and it will say for a complete selection of game packages, visit our pledge store. If you click that, it will take you to the game packages. I'm not going to talk about the game packages right now. You might have seen. I don't know whether it's been uploaded before or after this video. But either way, on my channel, there is a video going over the game packages, what some of the packages are, what certain things mean, and which ones I recommend. So go check that out. Um, if you do know what game package you want, then get your game package. All I will say, I'm going to assume that you don't want to spend any more than $54 on this game. And in which case, that gives you the option of the Aurora MR or the Mustang Alpha. And I would highly recommend the Mustang Alpha because bounty hunting is the best and quickest way to make money. It's not PvP necessarily. Mostly it is against uh, NPC pilots. And even if you're not the best of pilot, you will manage to make money fairly easily doing the early level uh, bounty missions and it will allow you to get other ships to go off and do other things you want to do. The Aurora just isn't as good at bounties as the Mustang. Yes, it is possible. I'm not saying it's not possible and it's, you know, it's just as easy maybe as the Mustang, but the Mustang is better suited to it. So I would recommend the Mustang and that's all I'm going to say on the game packages because I've tried recording this bit a few times and I keep going too in depth because I feel like I should point a few things out. So hence why there's another video on it. Anyway, moving on back to the game. So once you've chosen your game package and you've installed the game and you open it up, you'll find yourself on this main menu. And right here you can see we've got Persistent Universe, we've got Star Marine and Arena Commander. Arena Commander is uh, an arena in which you can take on waves of uh, pirate NPC pilots, you can take on waves of alien NPC pilots, or you can take on other players in PvP ship-to-ship -ship combat. It's all about the ships in Arena Commander. It's a, it's a, actually a good game mode. I really enjoy it. There's also a race mode on there with one track available right now, which is actually, if you like racing, really good fun to try and wrap your head around. And it also definitely improves your understanding of um, flight in Star Citizen. So really recommend diving in there if you get the chance. Star Marine is a FPS arena, basically. If you like first-person shooters, you'll probably quite enjoy this game mode. It's not perfect. It's a little buggy. Um, when I've played it and I've got a decent PC, sometimes on occasion there's been some major lag fests or it just wouldn't work. But when it does work, it is quite good fun. It's a good place to come if you want to try out your FPS skills and get to grips with the uh, gun combat in this game. So uh, again, it's worth looking at, if nothing else. The Persistent Universe is the verse. This is where you know, you're going to spend all your time. This is the main part of the game. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. So once you click on that, it's going to take you to the character screen if it's your first time joining so go ahead and make your character you can have some great fun messing around in here but i'll just quickly make my character and i'll show you what to do next 
So once you've made your character, obviously save and confirm. Now, um, in the future, it's good to know that some bugs with your character can be fixed by recreating your character. So you don't have to do a character reset necessarily. Uh, just recreating your character, you know, what it looks like can solve some issues. Mostly you'll be doing a sex change to get around some bugs. But depending on what the bug is, you know, if you ask in chat or whatever, most people will be able to advise you on what to do. But um, yeah, just bear that in mind. Some bugs with your character model can be fixed by doing a character recreation instead of an account or character reset necessarily. So keep that in mind. So once you've made a character, go ahead and click save. And it will take you to the Persistent Universe Primary Resident Selection screen. So the first thing it's going to ask you is to select the system. Right now there's only Stanton system, so go ahead and select that. There will be more systems coming in the future, but right now we all live in Stanton. Then it's going to ask you to select a location. This is the location of your primary residence, and it's going to give you the options of Orison, Lawville, Area 18, and New Babbage. Orison is a beautiful city, great place to walk around and visit, and uh, occasionally you'll need to go there to pick up parts of your ships or do a bit of shopping or whatever. As a starting location, I personally wouldn't recommend it. Yes, it's all opinion, guys. You can check it out later and see what you think. But I honestly, I wouldn't advise starting here to start with. My main reason as to why, despite there's current FPS issues there, but despite that, my main reason is the atmosphere. Orison is a city floating in the atmosphere of Crusader, and... It takes quite a while to get in and out of that atmosphere to get to the city. And also, when I come back to Orison, even now, um, and I've been playing for a couple of years now, and I've been playing quite a lot since Orison was released, I still struggle to get into an area in which I can speak to the landing services to be given permission to land at Orison. It's just annoying. After a long journey through the atmosphere in a slow ship, it's a pain in the backside just trying to land there so i wouldn't pick orison um if you want to spend most of your time in the crusader area don't worry though because lawville is not far away lawville is an industrial city it's on the the planet of hurston in hurston space and it's not very far from crusader and orison Lawville's really cool because um it's got an industrial look to it if you like that kind of thing it's also quite easy to navigate around once you get used to it at least uh, most things are in an easy enough area to get to and find um, it's an it's a pretty good place to start it's also got like i said a, a nice quick jump over to crusader if you want to spend a lot of time there but you will spend most of your time i would say in hurston and crusader space that's where you're going to be most of the time maybe arcorp and Arcorp is where you'll find Area 18. This is my favourite city. This is what I'm going to select for this character. And on my main account, it's where I set as my primary residence. I just like the city. It's my favourite city uh, that's in the game at the moment. It looks really cool. It's a futuristic metropolis type of deal. Uh, it's on Arcorp, which is a planet that is covered in city, uh, if that makes sense. There's literally no greenery. Everything's built on. But Area 18 itself is really cool. Everything's really centralised in the middle of our uh, in the middle of Area 18, and it's nice and easy to get around and to find what you're looking for. Uh, it's easy to get to the spaceport. It's easy to get out of the spaceport. It's easy to get into the spaceport. That's why I like it. And it's also, although it's not as close to Crusader or Hurston, is Hurston and Crusader are to each other, it's not that much further than the two. So it's it's quite good to be there. Um, it's not miles away from where you're going to spend most of your time, like I said, which is most likely going to be Crusader and Hurston. New Babbage is a beautiful city, a modern, crisp, clean city that looks great. Love visiting it. It's awesome when the uh, expeditions are there and things like expeditions expos whatever <laughs> when the events are there but it's so far away from everything else um so don't set this as your primary residence do go and visit it don't um be deterred to to go there is that the right wording uh don't let me put you off going there that's what i'm trying to say do go and visit it in game do go and do missions there 
do go and explore all that kind of stuff but don't set it as your primary residence in all likelihood like i said you're not going to spend most of your time there and it like i said it is so far away from the other areas i don't know if i mentioned it earlier and i don't know if you just heard that that's not me grunting or snorting that's my dog so if you hear that i apologize <laughs> i should probably point that out should have done it earlier um but yeah don't pick new babbage i would recommend either area 18 which is what i'm going to select or Lawville, just because, especially Lawville, is quite central in Stanton, and it's easy to get everywhere from there, especially if you're going to spend most of your time in Crusader, and you don't want to spawn at Orison. There's no right or wrong here, but believe me, it is a pain in the backside, at least to start with getting in and out of Orison. So I wouldn't recommend that. I'd pick either Lawville or Area 18, and Area 18 is what I'm going to pick. So once you've chosen... Um, just hit set as primary residence and then confirm and you will join the verse so once you've made your character and you've joined the verse you're going to find yourself lying on a bed somewhere like this if you haven't started in area 18 if you started in area 18 it will be this um, so you'll be laying on your bed in your apartment and you can press on hold w to stand up you can press y to stand up or if i lay back down which I'll show you how I've done that in a moment. You can hold F, which allows you to interact with stuff in the verse, and you can look around, and you'll see here it says get up. So click on that, let go of F, and you'll stand up. Um, obviously, that was how I laid down as well. If you hold F and look at the bed, it gives you option to sit or lay down. Um, you can also sit on chairs and things. If you hold F and you look around, you will find stuff it will let you interact with, such as the door, which says open to get out of there. But we'll go out in a moment. So um, once you got out of your bed, just double check what you've got on. Hmm, no, not like that, but by pressing I. That will bring up your inventory. I'll let me move because that chair's in my way of the camera. Your inventory will show you what you've got um, at your at the area you're at. Um, I'll talk about it in a moment. But the way the inventory works is drag and drop. So if I take off what he's wearing, I've grabbed the... Uh, undersuits it also took off the helmet which was attached to it which is now dropped into my inventory and then if you want to put on your items you simply drag it out by holding the left button on your mouse hover over the appropriate circle in this case this middle one oh, my character's bugging out let's uh, stop that before i fall through the floor or something uh, open your inventory so when i hover over him it's going to bring up a circle round his belly button because the undersuit covers you so it'll be like the middle one pop that on then we're going to get a helmet so that we don't die if we go outside in the atmosphere although in area 18 you're okay but if you're on a space station for example obviously you'll die if you go outside with no helmet on so grab your helmet drag it over drop it on the circle appearing on your head if you had um, armor that goes on your arms and shoulders there'll be a circle for that if you're putting uh, leg armor on there'll be a circle on your legs to put them on when you get your chest armor there'll be another uh, circle on your chest to put your chest armor on you get the picture you just drag and drop onto the appropriate areas and that's how the inventory works something i should have mentioned earlier when selecting a primary residence is the anything you own as you join the game so uh, the ship you got with your game package if you bought any additional things off the pledge store like armor weapons etc they will spawn in the area you select as your primary residence so if you select the area 18 everything ships items etc will all appear in area 18 so when you open your inventory like here everything you can see here is in area 18 if you had items uh, in lawville or new babbage say when you open your inventory in area 18 you won't see them items you can see them items in your moby glass and we will look at that in a moment but again going forward once you've set your primary residence everything bought from the pledge store will appear in your primary residence the other thing you're going to need to know about is the moby glass so if you press F1, it's going to bring up your Moby Glass. It's going to show you your balance. It's going to show you some vital life signs. This page don't really matter. It just opens your Moby Glass. If you click along the bottom, or you look along the bottom, sorry, you've got these little tabs all doing different things. So if we start, we'll go left to right. So to start, we've got Comlink. That's going to bring up your comms. It's going to allow you to speak to friends that you've got added. It's going to show you what channels are available. It's also going to show global chat. On the right hand side it's going to show you who's in this server you're on at the top there it says active members 40 or 42 this server we're currently in has the limit of 42 different servers 
seem to have different limits at the moment. Eventually, it's all going to be meshed, and we'll all be in a verse together. But right now, we're in individual servers, and uh, they have a limit on them. But you can see who's online on the right-hand side. You can also manage your chat. You can change the color. Back along the bottom, we'll click on the next one, which is Vehicle Loadout Manager. Obviously, it's only going to show my one ship, the Mustang Alpha. If I click on the Mustang Alpha, I can then see what we've got equipped so we've got the coolers we've got a power plant quantum drive shield generators and things like that all the components you can also change paint if you've got any and your weaponry um, all you do if you've got the weapons in your inventory would be to click on another you know if there was another cannon there for example you click the cannon then click equip then save changes and that will be saved onto the ship and whatever you know this m4a cannon would obviously be unequipped so that's what that does. You can only change stuff on your ship if it is stored in the city or the station that you're currently standing in. Um, you can't do it if the ship's out on a pad. You can't do it if you're out on a planet. You have to come to a city or a space station, store your ship, and then you'll be able to uh, change items around on your ship. Uh, so next we've got knickknacks. So knickknacks just shows you where all your items in the game are. So right now, obviously, we're only in our corp, so it's only going to show us our items that are stored here in Area 18. If we had stuff stored in Lawville and in Crusader somewhere uh, on, say, Port Olisar, or if we had stuff stored at New Babbage, on here it would show you the different areas, and then you could click Open like you can on Area uh, on our corp, which is now going to show Area 18 because we've got stuff stored here, but it would also... You know, you could navigate through to the different areas and it will just show you all the items you've got and where they are. So that's what Knickknacks does. Skyline is your navigation. It's your main map. It's how you get around the verse. I will show you more about that once we get outside. But all I will show you is that you can move it around by holding left click and dragging it around. You can move it across and around a little bit using the right click. But with the left click you can rotate and stuff like that. Um, the mouse wheel you can zoom in and out and obviously right now you can see we're in our corp It's got the little green marker to show that's where we are So if we zoom in and keep the mouse hovered over our corp We will slowly zoom in to the area of our corp and there you can see the moons around our corp Lyria and Walla and if we zoom in a little bit more It will bring up Bajimi point which is the station above area 18 and if you click on it, you can see the different areas on the planet. Um, if we zoom back out, if we try and zoom in and we're not on our corp, you'll miss it. So you have to like zoom in on your mouse point, basically. So to set a route to uh, follow, click a location, in this case Hurston, click set route, and on the left hand side of the screen, you will see it's given us two waypoints. And it will give you each waypoint in turn on your HUD display on the main game uh, outside your Moby glass I mean um, if you get a location that you can't jump to like in this case I can't look onto Microtech it's probably obstructed so if you look around you'll probably um, notice once you find the location you're trying to jump to it's red which will mean it's obstructed like you'll see here in a moment Microtech is in red because it's obstructed so all you'd have to do in this case is move away from whatever it is that's obstructing you in this case it's a planet so you just jump to another location and you don't have to go all the way just clear the obstruction um, so if you jump towards something with your quantum drive and then press U to shut down your power um, and then press U to turn it back on it will turn off your quantum drive and bring you out of quantum drive and then you'll be able to uh, set the route again and if you see here I'll click Microtech set route and it's given me a waypoint for Microtech because it's no longer obstructed so that's how the map and navigation works next along we've got MO Trader which is how you send other people currency in game so if you just click begin and then you can go to search and just type in whatever Dave and then it'll bring up all the results for people called Dave. And you can find the Dave you're looking for. Click on him. And then you can send him some money. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to send Dave anything. Next on from the trader, we've got the contracts manager. These are your missions. This is where you pick missions to do in the verse to earn money. 
got delivery missions, search and rescue missions, maintenance missions, bounty hunter missions, and mercenary missions. To keep the video a little bit shorter, because it's already going to be a long one, I'm not going to go over what every single mission type is and what you have to do from in this video. But in the future, of course, we will go over each type of mission and we'll go and do each type of mission so you can see what they are and what you have to do. But for now, we will leave it at that. In your personal missions, you can find some not so legitimate missions, basically doing some illegal type of stuff, but very similar mercenary maintenance. Sometimes there's uh, delivery missions and different missions, again, depending on where you are, will depend on what missions show up in your contract log. But that's your contracts. Next along, we've got the vehicle maintenance manager, which doesn't work unless you're in your ship on a landing pad or in a hangar or whatever, on a station, at an outpost or on a city, on a city, in a city. Basically, you can repair, restock, and refuel. Um, so obviously right now we're just stood in our apartment, so it won't show us anything. Your journal just shows you information about stuff in the verse. It's always worth a read if you're interested. But the main thing I want to point out here is the commodity price alerts. This will show you when stuff is overstocked or understocked. If something is overstocked, so, for example, this processed food at the Galette Jamley, Fa Jamley Farms, <laughs> Family Farms, they're overstocked with processed food, so they're going to be selling it off at a lower price, which means if you find somewhere where they're understocked, like Everest Harper, Harper? <laughs> My God, English hard. If you find somewhere like Everest Harbour right now where it's understocked, they're going to pay higher than the normal price they would. So you're going to make a little bit of extra profit. Obviously, them examples are not great. That's not very much money at all to be making. But sometimes, for example, you'll find distilled spirits. If you've got a big enough ship, that's a pretty nice little learner. It's not great, but it's good fun. But the real one on here is medical supplies. So right there, you can see CRUL4 is understocked with medical supplies. They're going to pay a premium rate. So if you can find somewhere where they're overstocked, you're going to make some pretty good money off of it. This isn't the best way to do trading, but it is quite good fun if you fancy it. So always worth checking if you are out and about trading. It's always worth checking the commodity price alerts in your journal. The last tab in your Moby Glass is Delphi. Delphi is your reputation manager, and it's going to show you all the organizations and contacts you've encountered. Um, so basically, every time you do a mission for someone, you're going to gain reputation. The first time you do a mission for them, it will then give you... Uh, their information here in Delphi. The more missions you do for an organization, the more reputation you gain and you level up your ranks with them. The higher your rank, the harder the missions are that become available and uh, the better the rewards are. You can also see contacts which will show you special characters you've encountered in the verse and as you encounter them, providing you've got the right reputation, they will offer you special missions. You can also press F2 to bring up your navigation map instead of go, pressing F1 and navigating to it through the tabs at the bottom. You can also press F11 to jump straight to your comms if you want to. And F12 turns chat on and off if you want to turn your chat off, for example. Another one to mention that I'm not going to demonstrate right now is uh, holding backspace will kill your character and force a respawn at your last um, selected medical center or if you haven't selected one it will spawn you back at your primary residence. So I think that's the Moby Glass covered and I know it's a lot to take in hence why I'm going to do this in several videos but again like I said at the start of the video I want to cover as much information as I can to arm you with the knowledge when you jump in the game so you don't have to be confused and try and work everything out or ask people. Um, you can do all the basics yourself. So that's the maybe glass the inventory and getting into the game. Next, I'll show you how you move around. Obviously, your mouse is how you look around, left, right, up, and down. The standard stuff for moving around with any sort of first person game. Um, obviously, W, A, S, and D again, W and S forward and backward, A and D left and right. If you've got a gun out, which I can't have out in the city, Q and E can lean left and right. And R would be reload. T turns your torch on and off, which you will want uh, a fair amount of the time. So keep that one in mind. T to turn your torch on and off. Control is you use to crouch. Spacebar is jump. And of course, shift is sprint. Now, the other thing you can do on Star Citizen 
is set your movement speed. We'll go outside to do that. So again, to get out the door, just hold F to bring up your interactive mode and click open on the door and you can get out. And now we're going to have to navigate our way to a lift to get out of the apartment block, which in Area 18's case is just here on the right. But you can admire the view out the window if you like. Ooh, lovely. So we'll go up to the lift. You've got a little display on the lift. Again, hold F to interact with it. Click call elevator, the elevator will come and the door will open. Um, you can select your movement speed with the mouse wheel. So you can scroll it right down so you're highly moving, or you can scroll it right up to be moving as quick as you can. You can also have it set to be at a walking pace, like so, and then you can hold shift to sprint at full speed. So if you want the immersion of walking around and then sprinting, you can do that. Uh, by setting the speed using the mouse wheel. And if you're wondering how I just changed camera, that is F4 to cycle through uh, on foot three different camera modes. So you've got slightly third person, full third person. You can hold Z or Z, however you want to pronounce it, to enter free cam, which will allow you to move the camera around. You can let go and it will stay there. So when you move around the camera stayed, and you hold Z to go back into free mode to move it. Um, I'll do another video on advanced camera options because you can actually set different camera angles and save them and use buttons and keybinds to bring up different camera angles. So um, we'll do that for another time. But there are your basics. F4 to cycle through camera angles. Hold Z to move around in free mode. And one more thing I forgot to mention is the inner thought menu. To access that, you hold F and right click to open it. In here you can find different options from emotes to wipe in your helmet. You can also equip and unequip your helmet um, and you can find things such as weapon selection and you can bring up a weapon wheel and see what weapons you've currently got on you. But definitely uh, open this up by holding F and right click and have a little look through it. Uh, let's get in the elevator. I will go to the ship and I will show you the basics of flight. Right, so once you get out of your apartment and you find your way to the spaceport at wherever you've started, you need to look for a vehicle retrieval console, which is one of these. Walk up to it, hold F, click use, and then it will show you what ships you have available. Now, if, like me, you're playing on a starter account with a starter package, then you'll probably only have one ship available, and for me, it's the Mustang Alpha. So we will click retrieve, it's then going to retrieve the ship into a hangar and tell us where it's spawned it. It's going to put it in hangar 3 for us. So next you need to locate the elevators. And the good thing about the cities in Star Citizen, if you look, everything is marked and uh, signposted. So up there you've got the signpost telling us hangar elevators are this way. And also on the floor you can see it says elevators this way. And on our right, like it says there, we've got the way to the hangars, and there's the hangar elevators. So we will go up to here, hold F, call the elevator, and down there you can see it says hangar 3, so that's where we're going to go. And then click hangar 3. Once we arrive, we'll run out the elevator, and boom, there is my Mustang Alpha. And there you will find whatever ship you started with, or that you've just spawned. Once you're here, look for the entrance to the ship. Um, I usually turn these markers off because I kind of like the immersion. And if you don't have their markers on, if you walk around the ship, you'll eventually, if you hold F, you'll be able to find things you can interact with. And then you want to look for an, a pilot seat. Uh, but obviously, like there, you can see it's marked showing us where the ladder is to get in. So we'll just go ahead and get in and the pilot seat. And we're going to climb up into the cockpit. Alright, there we go. Alright, now we're in. We're going to turn on the ship by pressing R, which will turn on everything. You can turn on U, which will turn the power on. And then I is for the engine. But R just starts up everything. So go ahead and press R. Welcome. Your journey begins now. All systems operational. There we go, everything's online. So now we're going to press F1 and go to the comms link. Yes, you can press F11, but I'm so far into the habit of just navigating through that that's what I do. But you can just press F11 to bring up your comms. Then you're going to go to the friends section and click 
Area 18 landing services, or forget the Area 18, you're just going to click the landing services for wherever it is that you are. In my case, I'm in Area 18. So click this little symbol next to it, and now we're going to contact them. You are clear to launch. There we go, they've given us clearance, and if we hold Z to go into free cam, which will allow you to look around your cockpit, if we look straight up in Area 18, we'll see the uh, doors opening above us. So we're safe to take off now, so we're going to hold space bar to give us some upwards thrust and that's going to get us out of the area. So now we're out of there safely. Um, again with a camera you can cycle to an outside view with F4, you can hold Z to enter free cam to look around your ship. There's another ship there taking off, it's a cutlass black by the look of it, looking cool. Um, but yeah, you can use this to see the outside of your ship, and then if we press N, it's going to retract our landing gear. Now, yeah, looking cool. Landing gear retracted. And if we look over here on the left, we've got VTOL, which this ship doesn't have. Coupled, which is a flight mode we'll talk about and maybe in an advanced thing. You don't need to worry about that as a new player. ESP. What is ESP? I just had a mind blank. I don't know. Anyway, gear is your gear up and down. So you can see that's when it's down, it's lit up. Landing gear engaged. And when we re when we bring it back up, that light will go out. What is it, ESP? That's going to bug me. I can't believe I can't Landing remember. Landing gear that. retracted. Anyway, someone can let me know in the comments. But this is just basic, so don't worry about that. So again, just like movement on your character on foot, space bar is to thrust upwards. Control will thrust downwards. W is forwards, S is back, A is left, D is right, E rolls right, Q rolls left, and your mouse moves you left, right, up, down, and it's not inverted unless you invert it yourself. Um, and they're the basic controls, really. Um, with your weapons, obviously your left mouse button will fire your weapons. Obviously I can't do that in Armistice Zone. Let me just get out of the Armistice Zone so I can show you the weaponry. There you go, looking cool. So I've got cruise control on. You turn cruise control on and off using C. You can set your speed. On the left there you can see that red box moving. It's red because the red bar um, means you're above optimum speed for manoeuvrability for that given ship. Depending on your ship, that will be a different sized red zone um, if it's gone in this case the creamy color yellow color that is your an optimum speed to be uh, maneuvering this ship but you don't have to stick to that exactly but basically up there is max speed if you press C it will set to where your cruise control to wherever that speed is set so we're just trying to get out of the area so I'm gonna leave it flat out uh, shift is boost and X is your air brake, space brake, whatever you want to call it. It's going to slow you down faster. It's using your thrusters in reverse to uh, slow you down. So now we're out of an armistice zone. You can see the left mouse button shoots our main weapons. If we had other weapons, you can also use right click. Clicking your middle mouse button, if you've got missiles, will access your missile mode and once you get your missile mode on it will lock onto a target and once it's gone green and locked on you can use your left mouse button to fire off missiles um, and yeah that's how that works but we don't have missiles so no need to worry about that on this ship you can also use H and J to uh, launch countermeasures there's different ways of doing things we'll cover them in another video but they're the basics if you need to avoid missiles to enter quantum drive, you need to enable it. So you press B to open your quantum drive. Uh, you can see there it's spooling, which is the top percentage. Left percentage is calibration. So if we look at Bajini point right now, you'll see it will now start calibrating. Once that hits 100%, we can hold B and quantum drive. There we go. And press B to turn your quantum drive back off. Uh, the other thing, I don't know if you've got to see it up here. No, you can't. But um, L will turn on, turn your lights on and off. Oh man, we are absolutely hooning it through the space. Right now, through the space? 
whatever around the space station you can see that it's brought up please contact ATC to land so now we're near the space station I'll show you how you land and obviously if you was uh, back in our court uh, in area 18 this would be the same you fly near the spaceport once you're in range you'll be able to open your comms again you can press F11 if you want to, to do that go to friends and locate the appropriate service in this case I want to land at Bajini point so I'll contact them It's now going to mark a landing bay for me, which right now, because we're on the dark side of the planet, uh, it's pretty dark. This will become daylight at some point, but right now it's night time. So you just head to that little marker that's in front of me. So we're going to approach this landing pad. And like you see the marker there, that's what you're looking for when you come into land. So we're going to slow down. We're going to bring the speed down again with that square on the side on the thrusters. You can do this all in one action, obviously I'm breaking it down to show you guys. So we've got a landing gear retracted. So now we can approach the landing pad. And we can get into the area. And then once we slow down above it, we can use control to gently land. Right, okay, so this time when I land, I'll show you how you can use an automated landing. So we're going to aim for the same thing, we're aiming for the pad, you can see the orange markers there. Uh, different ships make this different colour, but for this ship it's an orange orange pad there. So we'll get into the orange area, and once we're above it, if we hold N, it will then auto land. That was a bit buggy then for some reason, but there you go, that's landing itself. Now you've got to be within that rad that the radius, Have a pleasant stay. you've got to be within the radius of the orange box it showed. Uh, to get out of your cockpit seat, you hold Y. Uh, in this case, we're not, you know, we've got no like internal area to ship, so you just climb straight out of your cockpit, and your canopy will shut behind you, and your ship's now safe. And that's a good point to point out right there. On any ship with like a rear ramp or anything uh, that doesn't shut automatically, always make sure you shut it behind you, because if you run in here quick to do something, you might come out to find someone's nicked your ship. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to say I'm guilty of that as well. Uh, it's good fun, you know. Don't shut your door, I'm going to fly ship. So um, shut your doors behind you if you don't want your ship to go wandering off somewhere. I'll show you how you fly in uh, EVA quickly while we're just finishing the video. Um, so I'll have to jump off the space station quick. Pow. There we go. It just works exactly like um, moving your ship around. Same controls. Space moves you up, control moves you down, A and D is left and right, W and S is forward and back, Q and E is roll left and right. There you go, we're just bobbing around in space there. Um, and then to land in the EVA, just go near an area and you will hmm, hurt yourself. Um, well, as long as you're close enough to the deck of something or a surface, you will land, uh, hopefully without hurting yourself. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said earlier, this is the first in a series for beginner guides to the verse, so keep your eyes peeled for future videos where we'll get more in depth and further through the game and its mechanics. But thanks for watching guys, hope it was helpful. If it was, please do hit that like button, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you in the verse. Cheers!